the extra-dimensional city of Alagata and the strange entities that call it home. Hello everybody, I am Lavis and the SCP I'm going to tell you about today is SCP-2264, In the Court of Alagata. Before I begin, if you're enjoying these narrations, then please consider liking the video and maybe subscribe. With that out of the way, let's begin. Item Number SCP-2264 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures Due to the unavoidably public nature of the building housing SCP-2264-A, security measures are to focus on preventing civilian access to the anomaly's entrance. The Foundation is to cooperate with the Government of the United Kingdom in concealing the existence of SCP-2264-A. A hidden passage to SCP-2264-A has been constructed and remains its only means of access. The original entrance to the room where SCP-2264-A is located has been walled over, ensuring that only authorized personnel have access to SCP-2264-A. Operatives are to be reassigned and replaced monthly due to the threat of psychological addiction to SCP-2264-B. Description SCP-2264-A is a door composed of iron located within a hidden chamber beneath Martin Tower, a part of the Tower of London, also known as Her Majesty's Royal Palace and Fortress. The gateway cannot be unlocked through traditional means, requiring a highly ritualized process. Attached to SCP-2264-A is a complex apparatus composed of alchemical tools such as alembics, retorts, and a crucible. Based on journals found within the hidden chamber, SCP-2264-A is presumably the creation of Henry Percy, 9th Earl of Northumberland, an English aristocrat, alchemist, and long-term prisoner within the Tower of London. Despite his incarcerated status, the Earl maintained a degree of influence, said to enjoy a comfortable lifestyle and allowed access to books and research material. He was known as the Wizard Earl due to his extensive library and interests in the scientific and occult. It is considered possible that others within Percy's circle of associates were involved in the creation of SCP-2264-A, including John D, famed alchemist and court astrologer of Queen Elizabeth, the School of Night, which was a secret society interested in the study of science, philosophy, and religion, of which Henry Percy was supposedly member to, may have also had involvement. Journal of Henry Percy, the Wizard Earl. Negredo, we will confront the dark night of the soul. The pineal gland will be freshly extracted. Fire evokes the shadow within. Albedo, wash aroint the impurities. Rain cleanses all sin and prepares the soul for Elysium. Divide, not as dictated by the rigors of harmony, but rather into two opposing principles to be later coagulated to form a unity of opposites. Saturnitus. Victory coincides with the yellowing of the lunar consciousness. The white surrenders to dawn. The traveling lamp slays the moon. Rubedo. Red eludes. Instead, surrender upon the apparatus a sanguine sacrifice. A Foundation alchemist was consulted. The instructions are roughly comparable with the magnum opus, a four-part process employed in the creation of the mythological Philosopher's Stone. Replication of this procedure required redacted. To request this information, please contact the Department of Alchemical Studies. Through still undetermined means, a mechanism within SCP-2264-A responds to the completed solution causing it to unlock and open, allowing access to SCP-2264-B. SCP-2264-B is an extra-dimensional city which does not correspond to any known location, earthly or otherwise. Objects that originate from within SCP-2264-B will dematerialize if brought through SCP-2264-A. Such objects have been later found returned to the site of their initial removal. Those who enter 2264-B report having all personal belongings removed and their clothes replaced. Manifested outfits are said to resemble those worn at masquerade balls, most especially those associated with the Carnival of Venice. 
and will dematerialize upon exit of 2264B. Masks cannot be removed while inside 2264B, but the rest of the attire can be discarded if one chooses to do so. The majority of 2264B inhabitants are dressed and adorned in a similar fashion. Agents have reported a somewhat organic quality to their costumes, frequently describing it as chitinous. The most common inhabitants of 2264B are roughly humanoid and have since been classified as SCP-2264-1. The sky has been described as yellow and containing an indeterminate number of black stars, corresponding with no known or even hypothesized constellations. Buildings are shaped in such a manner as to suggest them being carved from a single seamless material. Black, white, yellow, and red are the only colors to reportedly occur within SCP-2264-B. Architecture is non-Euclidean, and the more normal laws of gravity do not apply. This may be caused by multiple gravity wells within the city, but this cannot be directly measured. Thus, inhabitants can be observed as climbing a stairway upside down, but based on their own gravity source, they are climbing normally. The city has been described as having the odor of dried flowers and a hint of mold, or a scent not unlike that of old books. The actual size of the city has been difficult to measure, but it appears to be located on an island, surrounded by a black ocean. The composition of the liquid is unknown, but described as appearing more viscous than water. Operatives have reported a hypnagogic malaise while exploring SCP-2264-B, with difficulty estimating time and space. Although 2264-B is a tangible location and is not considered to be an actual dream, those who had a history of lucid dreaming have shown far greater self-control and attention to detail than those who did not. Operatives are to be reassigned and replaced monthly due to the threat of psychological addiction to 2264B. Initial efforts at exploration resulted in eight AWOL operatives, with those that returned having difficulty describing what they had observed in a coherent and or detailed manner. Exploration Report Dr. Calixto Narvaez, First Deployment the almost hypnagogic nature of 2264B has led many to observe it as a dream or hallucination, failing to fully recognize its inherent verisimilitude. A lucid dreamer and an experienced user of hallucinogenics, I, Dr. Calixto Narvaez, was well chosen for this mission. My comrades quickly surrendered to the anomaly, engaging in the decadent pleasures of the city, most especially within the palace. Tempting as it was, I did not join the others in their rapturous orgy. I would suggest interviewing those that previously entered SCP-2264-B again. It is unlikely they've gone into all the details. When allowed a chance to directly control a dream, so many claim they would fly or visit the stars. Those people are liars. Most choose to surrender to their ecstatic delirium of sexual pleasure. Again, this is not a dream but I am able to understand why most are unable to perceive the difference. I am reminded of the legend of the Hassassins, how their leader supposedly drugged and led his recruits into his castle. Within was a pleasure garden that rivaled any imagined paradise. The individuals truly believed they were offered a taste of the divine. 2264B works in a somewhat similar way, but I do not believe that is the reason for its splendor. I doubt it's intended to be a trap. It is simply a city, although certainly a majestic city unlike anything I'd ever before encountered, but one that happens to exist outside baseline reality and does not entirely conform to the physical rules we are used to. I have made significant discoveries while exploring 2264B. First, universal translation of language. While most of the agents perceived the inhabitants as speaking English, I heard them in my native tongue of Spanish. Even those of my team, when communicating with me directly, appeared to have been speaking Spanish while within the anomaly. I have discovered that this is also applied to written language, but not quite as accurately. Written words initially appear as alien shapes, most of the symbols having a somewhat spiral-like pattern. 
If one continues to directly observe the symbols, they will begin to blur and alter until some level of translation is manifested. However, there do appear to be limitations and it seems that some words native to SCP-2264-B have no equivalent in any human language. The words appear to move on paper and prolonged exposure can easily result in nausea and headache. Second, the true name of SCP-2264-B is Alagada, a city-state said to border the Neverment, which we still don't know the meaning of. I was able to gather much of this information from the Wandsman of Kulmanas, a scholar and foreigner like myself. They wore a beaked mask and exquisite robes cloaked their hunchbacked form. Their hands were scaly, more avian than reptilian, with black talons. They unfurled a scroll before me, said it was a map of the multiverse, layer after layer of endless spirals. I sense an oncoming migraine just thinking about it now. Regardless, I was pleased to meet a fellow intellectual within. I asked them about the nature of their research. What is the nature of all that is, they asked, I assumed rhetorically. Just for a start, they noted. Third, there is a specific power structure within 2264B involving entities that, based on description, could easily be considered some of the more dangerous reality benders known to the Foundation. The Wandsmen of Kulmanas warned of individuals that should not even be approached, lest we draw undesirable attention to our reality. There are, or were, four masked lords who directly oversee SCP-2264-B. The Black Lord, wearer of the Anguished Mask. The White Lord, wearer of the Diligent Mask. The Yellow Lord, wearer of the Odious Mask. The Red Lord, wearer of the Mirthful Mask. They were said to be the chief advisors to the King of Alagada. They continued to warn that I not be fooled by their names, each just as terrible as the other. I have seen the masked lords, always at a distance, all except the wearer of the anguished mask. I was informed that the Black Lord was victim of a political struggle some time ago, the reason never known, if reason existed at all, and cast into some dreadful dimensional backwater. This seems to refer to our very own SCP-035. It would only be a matter of time before they return. The insidious glamour of the city-state disguises a dreadful truth, one the Wandsmen had difficulty expressing in words. They stated that most outsiders came to this place to seek a boon from the king. They refused to speak any more of this entity and suggested I avoid the ambassador of Alagada as well before politely taking their leave of me. I decided it time to report back, gather the others, pulling a few from the writhing mound of masked trans-dimensional entities. The first door we entered was the one to return us to baseline reality. I suspect that SCP-2264-B is a dimensional nexus connected to countless worlds across the multiverse. Every door used within SCP-2264-B has connected directly to 2464-A. If there are other gateways like 2264-A, I suspect them to be currently sealed. Dr. Calixto Narvaez was commended for his initiative. A psychological evaluation has determined it's safe for him to re-enter in the near future, although it has been requested that he use a more professional tone with regards to his reports. Future operatives will be screened for higher than normal levels of activity in the parietal lobes while in a state of altered consciousness, sleep or otherwise. The Wandsman of Kulmanas has since been classified as SCP-2264-2 and is considered an invaluable source of information. The Masked Lords of Alagada have been classified as SCP-2264-3. Exploration Report Dr. Calixto Narvaez, Second Deployment I believe SCP-2264-2 is the only entity we might truly trust in Alagada and sought them immediately. The city contains thousands, if not millions, but 2264-2, the Wandsman, stands out and appears to have a strictly scholarly interest in Alagada, most especially the Palace Library. The collection was impressive and could have been infinite in size for all I knew. There was no visible end to the room, the corridor stretching long into the horizon. 
I wandered the seemingly endless hall, Agent Cromwell and Dr. Yu at my side, in search of the Wandsman. I scanned through a few grimoires and scrolls, the alien symbols failing to translate, leading me to suspect that no earthly translation was possible. In time, we found the Wandsman, affable as before and expressing concern about our well-being. I asked that they elaborate and I write the response as best as my memory allows. The Ambassador of Alagata will soon return from Aditum and only the Mad shall remain. I suggest you leave post haste, for I intend the same. I thanked them for their warning and declared that we would not linger for long. I asked them about Aditum. They replied, A terrible city, filled with equally terrible people. It is said that the Grand Carcist of Aditum serves the designs of an elder being, a horror thought to rival even the Hanged King of Alagata. The Wandsmen then made a sound not unlike a crow. I should not speak of them, not here. I then asked about who they were, wanting to know more about them. They replied, I am the Wandsmen of Kulmanas, a scholar as you undoubtedly know. I am a walker of the astral plane, a sailor of the celestial sea, and a spelunker of the planar deep. The Wandsmen noted something about our aura declaring it rare across the multiverse, but admitted to having encountered similar during previous visits to Alagata. They said something along the lines of, The deathless merchant of London, driven by greed and black ambition. There was another, a stranger in a strange land. It appeared as though they did not know where they were, smelling of fear. I cannot imagine how one might accidentally stumble upon Alagata. I didn't believe such a thing was possible. They vanished soon after, yet I never witnessed them leave, simply gone in a blink. They would continue to reference the Carcists and Clavagers of Aditum, stating that they reeked of decay and embryonic fluid. That was the extent of people encountered with a similar aura to our own. I suspect the Wandsman is able to sense a person's dimensional neighborhood. The Wandsman turned their head completely around, somewhat like an owl, and cawed declaring, I sense the ambassador of Alagata has returned. I take my leave of this place and I suggest you do the same. Flee. Do not delay. Perhaps I will pay your realm a visit in the future. The Wandsman exited the nearest door. The door refused to budge, but I suspect it connected the Wandsman to their native dimension. We exited the library, walking quickly, not wishing to bring too much attention upon ourselves by running. We found an unlocked door and returned home. We never saw the ambassador or their king, but I feel it best that we not seek them out. Although not directly encountered, the ambassador of Alagata and the king of Alagata have been respectively classified as SCP-22644 and SCP-22645. The following information is restricted to level 4 personnel or above. The O5 Council voted 10 to 3 in support of sending Mobile Task Force Psi 9 Abyss Gazers into SCP 2264B. The goal of the operation was to locate the Ambassador and the King and calculate the level of threat they represent to humanity, Earth, and local dimensional space. Twelve agents, trained in hand to hand combat and counter occult stratagems, entered SCP 2264A on at 0800. One agent returned alive. The rest are presumed dead or otherwise irretrievable. Interviewed, Agent Alexander Papadopoulos. Interviewer, Dr. Laxmi Narang. Forward, Agent Papadopoulos was found to be in critical condition upon their exit of SCP-2264, losing consciousness soon after. A physical examination revealed fractured bones throughout the entirety of their body and extensive internal bleeding. After three weeks of hospitalization, Agent Papadopoulos was deemed healthy enough for interview. Begin log. I know it might be difficult, but please tell me everything you remember. The city was remarkable. Command prepped us for it as best they could, but words failed to do it justice. We all had the appearance of harlequins or something out of an old-time masquerade. Wasn't exactly the same, but close enough. Couldn't take the mask off, hard as we tried. We had a mission to complete, but the details were quite vague. Vague? Find SCP-2264-4 and 5. Get an estimate on their threat level. 
We knew they were important to SCP-2264, but we had no idea what they looked like or how to locate them. Go on. Right. Well, we found a palace. Don't know how long it took. Time has no meaning in a place like that. The city is full of people, especially that palace. But it didn't feel like being in a busy city in our world. There was something different about it, but I don't know how else to describe it. Layered? No, still not right. Not important, I guess. Things blurred a lot. Everything seemed to follow a sort of dream logic. What do you mean, dream logic? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't a dream, I'm certain of that, and I have the scars to prove it. It was all real, but have you ever noticed how dreams rush through the details? You end up one place, but don't really recall how. It was like that. I remember the masquerade, the music and the dancing. Oh, and the f***ing. All with their masks on, of course. Seeing some of them nude was a shock. They aren't like us. Let's just say that not everything was part of an elaborate costume. Their skin was like porcelain. I think those were the natives. You know, SCP-2264-1. But the more you stared, the less human everyone seemed. Some had too many limbs, some had too few. They were like monsters from an old fantasy comic I read as a kid. Crazy as this place was, I don't think we were ever seeing the whole truth. It's like a filter. The people look humanoid because we're human. Something from another world would see us more like them. But some, especially the natives, I got the feeling that behind those masks, beyond their illusions, was something inconceivable. <laughs> Sorry, rambling. Head hurts trying to remember. I can't move my arms or legs. What's wrong with them? The numbness is just a side effect of your medication. Please focus on my questions. Okay, if you say so. I remember having to pull Agent Marr away from some woman. I think it was a woman. Wasn't attacking him or anything. Quite the opposite, actually. Couldn't blame him. She had curves in all the right places. Made it easy to ignore the tentacles. So, the twelve of us stick together. Hard to not look like you're out for trouble with that many. Anyway, we wandered around the palace and it was like a labyrinth. I honestly couldn't have been surprised if we stumbled into a minotaur or something. We spent most of the time descending the stairs, I think. I remember feeling like we were traveling deeper and deeper. And then, somehow, just when we thought we had reached the bottom, we were back outside. It looked like we were in exactly the same spot as when we first entered SCP-2264-B. Hell, we could all see the palace in the distance. But something was different. Everything was dark, drained of color. Like, we could see in all, but it was a hazy gray twilight. The streets were empty, and the buildings looked... ruined? Yeah. It was like the whole city was abandoned long ago. Desolate and silent. Not a sound but our own footsteps. We eventually entered this iteration of the palace. Everything was identical, at least the architecture. That's when we heard whispers. It spoke in a language I had never heard before. I could feel it slithering into my ear, eating its way to my brain. Please continue. We destroyed ourselves. What? We had no other choice. The Ambassador, it found us. It didn't have a face, no mouth, nose, or eyes. I thought it was wearing a skin-tight outfit and high heels. That's what it looked like at first, but no. That was its body. Its flesh was black. It stood tall, lithe, and androgynous. And so... so... Please, information is important. Pace yourself. We can stop if it stood so damn proud. Just radiating arrogance. I couldn't understand a word it said, and yet every syllable dripped with narcissistic venom. It brought a hand to where a mouth should have been, and it laughed and laughed. And then, we destroyed ourselves for its amusement. Our bones were shattered, our flesh was torn open, and our organs ruptured. We ruined ourselves in body and mind, all for that thing's amusement. And the whole time, I tried to scream, I tried to beg couldn't make a sound. 
I'm so sorry, I tried to say. I'm so sorry. My team. My friends, I remember how their eyes pleaded for mercy and asked for forgiveness. You don't forget eyes like that. In the end, I was the only one left alive, surrounded by the mutilated corpses that were once my team. I understand now. The ambassador needed a witness, one to deliver its message, to tell you this and... Please, continue. I watched the ceiling move as it, it, as it dragged my broken body from room to room. Eventually, we stopped and it lifted me up, held me up before the throne. There I saw the king. It was anchored in place with hands and throat shackled tight, like, like a corpse in bondage. Its face was hidden beneath a black veil, or maybe it was a hood, I, I don't quite remember. But I remember these horrid imps. They were caressing the king's twitching body, as if trying to comfort it. But others pulled the tethers even tighter. The king trembled and quivered, and I saw pale tendrils slither in and out of its tattered robes. I looked on as the imps lifted the king's veil. I want to die. I can't live with what I've done. Please kill me. End this. I can't feel my legs. I can't feel my arms. Not like this. Not like this, please. I'm begging you. You know I can't do that. Please tell me what you saw. A god-shaped hole. The barren desolation of a fallen and failed creation. You see the light of long dead stars. Your existence is nothing but an echo of a dying god's screams. The unseen converges, surrounds you, and it tightens like a noose. End log. Operations involving SCP-2264 are suspended until further notice. The agent's request for termination has been denied. Due to the considerable damage suffered, amputation of both arms and legs was deemed necessary, and subject is no longer able to perform most biological functions without the aid of life support systems. He is to be restrained for his own protection. Despite his loss of limbs, suicide attempts have been made, and he is to be thoroughly interrogated for all possible information related to SCP-2264. Due to his contact with 2264-4 and 2264-5, the Ambassador and the King, he is to be quarantined and carefully observed for signs of anomaly. Agent Papadopoulos has refused food and water, requiring the use of a feeding tube. Addendum SCP-2264 was discovered accidentally during the refurbishment of Martin Tower and... The Foundation was contacted by representatives of the Crown due to the suspicion of a potentially anomalous artifact based on the writings found within, since attributed to Henry Percy, 9th Earl of Northumberland. Discovered among his notes was an unsent letter intended to be received by Christopher Marlowe, famed poet and playwright. The letter is dated 30th of May, 1593, the day of Christopher Marlowe's unsolved murder. Document 2264-0037 To my singular good friend, may this missive reach thee ere tis too late. Twas thou who urged against my building of the Janus Gate. My insult was cruel, having deemed thee foolish and ignorant of the sciences. I prithee thee forgive mine arrogance. Twas thou who suffered the evil to which I was blind. I showed thee the other ordinary, and allowed the secret darkness to coil around the cinder of thy beautiful heart. I was blind, but now I see. I beseech thee to burn that accursed play, and return it to ash. Thy patron seeks to corrupt and defile. Whence he cometh, there are things that simply should not be. The ambassador shall exploit thee as they did us. I have sealed the Janus gate so that only the enlightened may enter. May they have the wisdom to see what I could not, and the power to slay the wretched king within. Damn that metropolis of blood, that terrible realm and its ancient countless crimes. Consign thy play to the fire, deny thy vile patron, and aroint thee from this madness. We would fain welcome thee back into the night. It seems likely that the play referred to here is SCP-701, Scripts should be investigated for more information on Alagata. 
Thank you very much for listening. If you enjoyed this entry, then please lend your support by liking and subscribing. I also started streaming some nights on Twitch, so if you feel like dropping by and saying hi, I'll leave a link to that in the description. Also, if there are any other SCPs that you would like to hear me read, please leave them in the comments below. Have a nice day.